<clears throat> all right, Shalom Amakim. Before I get started, I want to give all praises, honor, and the glory to Yahweh Bashimi Al Shai, Wa Harakakudash. And of course, as always, double honors to our apostles and our elders that rule well at Great Millstone. Salutations to all you sincere Akim that are preaching this word in all truth and in sincerity. This is Matthew, all right, chapter 10, verse 38. It says, And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. That's red letter. That's whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yahweh Shai, all right, our Lord and Savior. And, um, you know, he's saying that, you know, you have to be able to, you know, deal with, you know, the burdens of this world, the burdens that you carry on your day-to-day -day life <clears throat> in order to follow him, in order to follow after him. You know, everything that comes your way, you have to be able to endure and handle it, man. All right, the apostles, elders always tell us that. You know, in order for you to be a man of the Lord, well, first of all, you got to be a man. And a man has duties. All right, if you have children, a wife, you know, you're supposed to be able to take care of them. You being a man, you should be able to take care of yourself, you know, and not depend on other people. All right, now your situation, things that you go through, you know, ultimately you got to be able to take care of yourself now once again your situation the things you go through is between you and the lord you know not everybody's going to be on the same level financially all right and when it comes to you know things of this world but one thing's for sure is uh you know you have to be able to take care of yourself first and foremost mentally spiritually all right physically you know, all the financial stuff and all that, you know, comes with this, but that's not, that's not everything, right? Say you got a job being a janitor or working at McDonald's, <laughs> the Lord is going to look at that and say, oh, I'm not going to save you. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. All right. But he says one more time in verse 38, and he that taketh not his cross the things you go through, the burdens that you carry, okay, and follow it after me is not worthy of me. So you have to be able to, you know, carry your own burdens. You got to be able to, you know, seek your own salvation, man, with fear and trembling. No brother can walk you into the kingdom, all right? The only ones that can save you is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay? That's why when people ask us, like this bug out that was at camp last week, um, are we saved? And the answer, the true answer is no. We're not saved. Okay, saved is a is a past tense ter term. All right? We're still here fighting for our salvation. We're still here catching hell under Esau, the so-called white man, who is the damn devil. Okay, so are we saved? No. Okay, we haven't passed the hour of temptation. All right, nuclear missiles have not been shot to the ends of the earth. Okay, we have not been beamed up in the chariots, which are so-called UFOs. So we're not saved yet. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing this lesson, you know, I had a dream, and I can't remember it. But the Spirit told me to get this scripture in verse 39 to do a lesson on. All right. And I can't remember the exact dream, but let's read it. It says, He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. See, so the most important thing in this life. You being an Israelite, so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Israelite foreigner, is to seek Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right? To find the Lord, to worship the Lord, okay? To glorify the Lord, which is what we do on the highways and byways, 
That's the most important thing in this world. Okay? Is to serve the Lord. You know, you wanting a, a perfect life, you're not going to get it here. You striving for things that you desire that pertain to this world, okay? Or that can get you someplace in this world, that all that shit's going to die, bro. <laughs> all that shit's going to melt with fervent heat. You know, we get demons on us. Oh, I want nice things. I want this. I want that. But does that pertain to your salvation? Okay. Is that going to get you into the kingdom? Fuck no. All right. Look at all these, these, you know, people that prosper in this world. Esau. Look at the elite of Esau. They own everything on this planet, even us. Okay. When it comes to, you know, you being um, born here, you know, having a uh, birth certificate, you know, that means that they own you, okay? And, you know, all the riches in the world ain't going to save them, all right? You know, Elon Musk, he got some rockets to shoot into fucking Mars and outer space. That ain't going to save him, man. As a matter of fact, let's get there. Uh, I believe it's Zechariah chapter 9. Nope. Zephaniah chapter 9. Wait. Is it Salak? Let's see. I'm about to look it up, but so we do. All right. Bear with me for a second. Mm -mm. Oh, it's Amos. <laughs> it's luck, yeah. This is Amos chapter 9 and 2. It says, Though they dig into hell, then shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, which heaven, all right, this heaven is dealing with outer space. It says, though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down, okay? Because the angelic forces, you know, the angels, all right, they're going to get all these Edomites, these elites that go into outer space and try to hide, man, you know? They go to, uh, you know, their space stations, flying in space with their rockets, okay, which is going to happen. They're going to seek to flee from the Lord and his vengeance, but the Lord's going to get them, man, all right, via the angels, okay, and though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence, and though they be hid from my sight, in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. You see? So there's nowhere they could run or hide. And these motherfuckers, man, excuse my French, these dirtbags, you know, the enemies of Yahweh Bashimi Yahweh Shai, and the elect, the one third, they're rich, man. Okay, they're rich in this world, talking about the elite. And they're going to do everything in their power to avoid that judgment, but it's not going to work. All right. They're still going to go into captivity. Okay. They're still going to be punished. All right. Let's jump back down to that. Okay. So verse 39, it says, he that, lo he that findeth his life shall lose it. You had guys in this truth that fell out that would say, Oh, I need to find myself. I need to go back to school. I need to do this, do that. Well, what the Lord say in, in uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 62? Okay. That if you don't continue on in the plow, you know, you turn your back to the pl from the plow, you're not fit for the kingdom. I mean, if you stop doing this work, you're not fit for the kingdom. Okay, you're going to be recycled. 
You're going to be destroyed. All right? It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's why you got to pray, man. You got to pray. What did David say? King David himself said, you know, he prayed to the Lord that he didn't take his Holy Spirit from him. And King David went off more than once. But he understood the judgment of the Lord. He understood repentance. Okay? He understood humility. Which, that's one part of this truth. Is to accept humility, man. And if you can accept humility, accept being humiliated for your own wrongs, that's being humble, bro. That's being humble. You know? But we found our we found ourselves in this truth, man. This truth is is the ultimate gift. All right, this is the ultimate treasure. This goes beyond gold, silver, precious stones. This goes beyond having the most gorgeous wife in this life, the biggest house, mansion, the elite. Once again, they have everything. They own everything. They got the best cars, they eat the best food, they got the best women, virgins, biggest houses, they own countries, they own lands and islands and things that we've never seen before. But you know what they don't have? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They don't have the kingdom. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have life, okay? They don't have life. Which life is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai? Okay. That's the ultimate treasure, the ultimate gift. Though they have everything in this world, they found their life in this world. They don't have nothing when it comes to the Lord. But guess what? And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. We're going to find everything. The Lord is going to give us everything. You fucking Satan, you know. Damn demons. <laughs> but you know what? We found our life. Okay? This is verse 40. He that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Okay? That's the importance of us being out there on the highways and byways. And that's the importance of people accepting us, man. If these people don't receive us, receive this message, okay, receive the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, they're damned, bro. They're doomed. All right? People that you come across in your life, they're doomed. There's no saving them. Okay? And, and you shouldn't lose sleep over it, man. You know, whether it's a woman, whether it's, you know, a family member, whatever, a best friend. All right, because all that matters is this word, this truth. This is the only thing that's pure, untainted. Okay? Everything else is tainted, bro. Nothing else matters like that Metallica song. The only thing that matters is you serving Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's truth. So with that, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Waha Rakakwadash. And of course, as always, double honors to our apostles and our elders that rule well a great millstone. Salutations to all you sincere Akim that are preaching this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.